By popular demand, today I'm testing these three machines. I got two MacBook Airs, base model and 24 gigabyte model. And I've got the MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip in here. This is the base model of the MacBook Pro 14 inch. Eight cores, 16 gigs of RAM. Today I'm testing three projects, small, medium and large. We'll see how quickly they build on all three of these machines. And we'll see if the price of an upgrade from a MacBook Air to a thousand dollar more macbook air we'll see if that's worth it and also these two machines are very close in price the air and the pro we'll see if it's worth going to the pro but i gotta tell you that you have to judge your own projects not the projects that i'm going to be running because these are these are my projects well one of them is the small one doesn't mean i don't know how to use it <laughs> so the small one is actually my own project that i'm writing and building for a client my team is building it for a client so it's a real world project it's got a single core build going on and it's got a multi-core build going on it's a mobile application and it's multi-platform you can target either ios or android with it it's built using native script which is actually written in typescript and it transpiles down to javascript and there's also third-party libraries that need to be built in native land so we've got a node process going on which is a single core build and after that there's a multi-core build it's going to utilize all the cores and that one is the native build so we we can see a mix of both worlds here because real projects are a mix so i'm going to set this up ns build ios on all three of these those of you that are not new to the channel already know mr schwarzenegger he helps us run the programs at the same time the schwarzenegger and let's go <laughs> there they go all right I'm using the time command because uh, we do get the time spit out by the program by the final build at the end, which is going to include the Xcode build, but that's not going to include the initial node build. So I want to use the time command to get us everything. I'm excited to see who's going to win this time because right now I do my builds on a MacBook Pro. Uh, that's my daily driver that has an M1 Max chip in it, 64 gigs of RAM. But what if the MacBook Air or one of these MacBook Airs is pretty good at doing this? Maybe I can carry a lighter machine with me. I'm seeing the the uh, base model MacBook Air was up to the 90s, but now they're kind of hovering about 80 degrees. And we are done. We are done? Yeah, wow. Okay, interesting. We got a mixed result, folks, and I'm gonna explain this in a second here. So on the base model MacBook Air, the Xcode build took 40 seconds, but the overall time took one minute and 19 seconds. On the upgraded MacBook Air, the Xcode build alone was 36.7 seconds, much faster. Well, not that much faster, but faster. And also we got a faster time for the overall build at one minute, 13 seconds. Now here's where the surprise came in. Um, <laughs> I got 39 seconds on the MacBook Pro which is slower than this MacBook Air. That's for the Xcode build. And one minute, 22 seconds total time, which is slower than both of these machines. So MacBook Airs are doing pretty well right now for this test. Why is this happening? The MacBook Airs actually have four performance cores and four efficiency cores each. So if we have a look at the CPU history, you'll see four and four. The MacBook Pro is a little bit different. This one has, well, it used to show the <laughs> the kinds of cores they were in history but now it doesn't but it has two efficiency cores and six performance cores the first two are efficiency and you can see there was history there but the performance cores are not showing much history so something is different in the way it's processing this particular build this is a, a clean build which means that i do this uh, once a day or so but throughout the day i do incremental builds so let's give that a shot this is the number that's going to matter more throughout the day because, well, I'm constantly building um, as I'm typing code and I'm changing code and I'm rebuilding. So this is the number right here that really affects how uh, many YouTube videos I watch in between my builds. <laughs> no, I don't watch YouTube videos. I work. I build code and don't get distracted ever. <laughs> All right. Whoa. Again, I'm shocked this is pretty crazy but again the macbook pro came in last in both the build time for xcode and the total time 
So we've got 17.9 seconds for Xcode build versus 17.1 on the upgraded MacBook Air and 18.8 .8 slower time than both of those on the MacBook Pro. Now the total time was 37.3 on the MacBook Air base model, 36, we, we got a second back. And then 40 seconds, 0.6 over there on the MacBook Pro. Of course, the M2 cores are newer cores and they are more performant cores than the old M1 cores. So this could be a result of that. I would have actually expected the MacBook Pro to, uh, to be faster than both of these, but hey, look at that. No wonder during the live stream the other day, I called the MacBook Air a mini MacBook Pro. This is good. Let's move on to our second test, which is the medium size build. And the medium size build takes a couple minutes to run. This is the Xcode benchmark project. You might've seen this on this channel before. I'll actually leave a link down to that below. It's uh, created by Maxim Yerimenko for these purposes of testing machines like this. Now, what's good about that one is it actually includes about 60 or more CocoaPods and other third-party dependencies that uh, it packages into the Xcode project to build it all together. So while it is a benchmark project, it's actually a pretty good one because, well, it uses a lot of dependencies and it builds them, which is something that real applications do as well. And it's only Xcode based, so we're gonna get a multi-core performance result here. And to run it, just execute the shell command with the script benchmark.sh, which is provided with that repository. And that one kind of wraps up the test nicely because um, it cleans up the project as well as give you a nice time output at the end. All right, Schwarzenegger, duty calls and let's go. Boom. Now, while we didn't see any temperature fluctuations, not big ones in the previous build, this test might actually show some temperature fluctuations. And we are seeing that uh, on the MacBook Airs, we're up in the 90s now. Uh, the MacBook Pro is actually staying pretty cool at 66, 64. Now we're into the hundreds here. Of course, for those of you that are not aware, the MacBook Airs don't have fans. So we only have passive cooling in there while the MacBook Pro does have a fan. Okay, uh, we are very close here, but we have a clear winner and I kind of expected this to happen. Here are the results. The MacBook Air base model got 124 seconds on this one. Pretty good and pretty consistent to the times we've seen before on that model. If you haven't seen that, you can check out the tests I've done with the base model. I've done extensive tests with that already. Now on the upgraded model, we got 121 seconds. So we're not getting that much benefit from paying $1,000 more here for this particular test. Here is where the big difference is. And this is where the performance cores, having more of them really kicks in. And we've got a time of 100 15 seconds for the MacBook Pro. Quite a bit faster and to extend that out a little bit more on my daily driver MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip, the 16 inch big boy right here. Uh, that test finishes in about 91 to 94 seconds. That one of course has 10 cores. All right, moving on to our final test, which is the big one. And that is WebKit. WebKit is actually a browser. It's what Safari is based on. So we're going to build the browser. It's an open source project. You can download it. I'll link to it down below. But I got to warn you, it's big. Cloning the project alone from the Git repo is, it takes a while. It's about a 13 gigabyte download. And building it takes a really long time. When I build it on my MacBook Air with the Intel chip from 2017, this has a Core i5 in it. That takes about three and a half hours. So I am gonna use the time command this time because while they do give you scripts, it's inside the tools folder, scripts, they have a clean script and they have build script. So I'm gonna use the build script, I've already cleaned it, and it's build WebKit, and you can pass the release flag or you can pass the debug flag. I'm just gonna use the release flag and then I'm gonna go have lunch. Come back Schwarzenegger, do your work. <laughs> All right. Hasta la vista, M2. Oh, this is gonna take a while. I'll see you in a bit. All right, all right, welcome back. We've got some results here and yep, we have a clear winner here and it's kind of what I expected to happen. Now, did you write down what your guess was? Go ahead, write down your guess in the comments down below. You can't delete it and you can't edit it, no cheating. If you guessed MacBook Air won this, you are, well, sort of right. Let's go over the details. The base model got 39 minutes and 55 seconds, which is not bad. Actually, that's that's pretty good. Uh, compared to some of the older machines, even the Intel-based MacBook Pros, this is faster. Now the upgraded MacBook Air M2 got 32 minutes, so considerably faster than the base model. $1,000 faster? Uh, I don't know. 
For about the same amount of money, if you're building this kind of project, a big one, and you are doing that pretty often, the MacBook Pro is a clear winner here. That took 25 minutes and 13 seconds, so quite a bit faster on that one. Performance cores are showing what they can do here in this case, because this is another one of those multi-core builds. Out of curiosity, I do read the comments down below. Let me know how long your big builds take, your biggest builds that you're working on. How long do they take to build on your current machine? And also write down what machine you're using. That would be interesting for me to know and for the other people that are reading the comments. Anyway, if this video was helpful to you, I'd appreciate a thumbs up or if it was entertaining i'll be mag our vip over there if you want to see more content like this consider subscribing thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video